Welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so excited to dive into today's topic. Before we get there, though, let's go around the room and see how everybody's doing. Jay, how are you doing today, buddy? Today, I'm doing quite good. Awesome. Yeah, I'm doing good. I, I loved Sunday. I, me and PT you did such an incredible job. I know Matt will probably say that, too. But you did <laughs> such an incredible job um, keeping us united in the things that are mm-hmm. most important. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. I was definitely I've been dealing with a little bit of fatigue over the last little while. I think I'm not sleeping that well, so mm. I'm, I'm feeling a bit better today. But maybe I need to rest my eyes from the digital world a little bit more yeah. before I go to bed so that I can have a deep rest. <laughs> but yeah, feeling like I need some deep rest. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. man. For sure. Nate, how you doing, buddy? Uh, amazing. I had uh, a great weekend away. <laughs> I would say there's... There's some really hard things, and then there was just some mountaintop moments of watching the Holy Spirit come through and mm-hmm. in ways I haven't seen before. I mean, 60 out of 70 youth kids surrendering their life to the Lord and Praise staying God. for an hour and a yeah. half to receive prayer Hallelujah. and the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. was pretty epic. Wow. And then the other 10 kids went back to their cabins and received the Lord with their cabin <laughs> yeah, leaders yeah. in their cabins. Ooh. So um, <laughs> still hearing stories and the ripple effect of Praise what God. happened. And uh, yeah, if that's the next generation... Yeah, of man. our leaders coming up in the church, I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah, so, yeah, baby. Yeah, it was awesome. Lots to celebrate. Lots still to do. Great mm-hmm. vision briefing tonight. Yeah. Looking forward to it. There's lots of people joining us for that. So, uh, yeah, excited to share what God's got in store for us and to, yeah, call our church family to enjoy the love and the lavish, yeah. you know, blessings of our Father. So, good. beauty. That's awesome. Toby, how you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. Awesome. Thank you, Mac. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm with Nate. You know, we went with on the uh, on the senior youth retreat, and just to see those kids worship was mm. insane. On Saturday night, there was a point where we just stopped playing our music, and they just like sang mm. by themselves, and every hand wow. was up in the air just worshiping. So and good. then we come back, and then the same thing happens in our church. We go, <laughs> okay, clearly, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. God is doing something incredible, and we mm-hmm. get to witnesses, with, witness it, which is just uh, insane. Yeah. So feeling tremendously blessed and just humbled Yeah. to be a part of what's going on at the moment. Yeah. Beauty. That's awesome. Tom, how you doing? Yeah, I feel really chill, which is, you know... Kind of neat because it's three vision briefings this week and four sermons to preach. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> relaxed and uh, looking forward. To, last vision briefing, I went in very ill, and so I'm looking forward to going. In. This one, I probably will do a worse job. But uh, <laughs> no morphine. But but I'm relaxed. Oh, so good. I'm happy about that. <laughs> and yes, awesome. yeah, crazy awesome things that God's doing. Mm-hmm. Just is just you know you wonder are we on the right path? And then He just shows you clearly mm-hmm. that you're doing the right thing. You're on the right path, and that's just I am so thankful for that. Yeah, Matt, how are that's you? Right. I'm doing really well. Um, you look great. Thank you. You're I, welcome. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, no, doing really, really well. It's been, like I say, the vision briefing, you know, last Monday was amazing. And this weekend was phenomenal with, with worship on Sunday. And uh, <laughs> wow, yeah, still processing that, to be completely honest. Like, sometimes uh, after a weekend like that, it usually takes me a few days to really step back and go, okay, God, like, what all are you doing here? Yeah. Not that I can ever see all that he's doing, right. but it, it's just really fun to kind of go sit back and go, oh, I see how you're connecting this and this piece. And it's just really, I don't know. I, I get so encouraged when I see all these little pieces coming together. And how does a South African sing our national anthem better than right? anybody we've ever heard in our entire Right? Lives? I'm not even joking. My she word. Did good. She did. It was Sheesh. phenomenal. It was so good. <laughs> so, yeah, just I was so blessed by Sunday. Um you know, Jay's already said it, but you did an incredible job at keeping us united. Um, but what I what I really appreciated as you navigated what some would say is some pretty pretty tricky stuff to walk through with some of the political stuff and those types of things. The message was so clear and the heartbeat was so clear that that our our heart and our focus always needs to be on Christ. You know, all this other stuff like it, it's all peripheral, um, but but our heartbeat and our focus has to be on Christ. And I love that messaging so much. Um, and then, you know, even the national anthem, which some people are like, why are we doing the national anthem? But it, it's a prayer it's for a our prayer. country. And it prayer. was such a beautiful way to tie that all together. Um, so thank you for doing that. And, um, yeah, I, I think it was just, I was very encouraged by that. Our listeners might not know, but all, every one of us, when it's our turn to preach, we send our sermon out Monday mm-hmm. at four o'clock yep. to about five other people yeah. uh, to get feedback and input. So it's always a, 
a team effort, and I'm thankful for that. I, I'm thankful for you guys and the others on the team that help us navigate difficult subjects mm-hmm. and try and do it the best that we possibly can. It, yeah. it's, it's still terrifying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but it's a little less terrifying. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, on that, on that note, I want to get into a few uh, things that you had talked about and addressed because I, there's just some powerful concepts in here that I think we need to unpack a little more. And uh, I want to pull a quote from your, your sermon on Sunday. You said, spiritual freedom must fuel political freedom. Um, it doesn't happen the other way around. And let's just take a minute. Can you just unpack that statement a little bit and what you meant by that? And then I have a couple questions I want to follow up with. But if you can kind of unpack that. Yeah, I think that was a quote from uh, Jesse Joss, uh, a devotional uh, mm-hmm. that was sent to me. And um yeah, well, I think the idea is that we are all slaves to something. You know, Bob Dylan said you're going to have to serve somebody. It might be the devil, but it might be the Lord. <laughs> but you're going to have to serve somebody. So we're all slaves to something or someone. Mm-hmm. And so if it isn't to Christ, then whatever kind of other servitude we're in is going to be twisted and nasty. Slavery to Christ is the only one that actually makes you free, which is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a fun head game, but it's absolutely true. So there's huge danger when we're pursuing freedom Mm -hmm. apart from the one, the only one who can set us free. It'll just end up in another kind of bondage. Yeah, absolutely. So along that line, and this question is for all you guys, so please chime in here, but how does spiritual freedom... And you, you've alluded to this a little bit, but let's let's really unpack this. Impact the application and the maintaining of political freedom. Like if you launch it from this spot of spiritual freedom and then engage with politics, how does that actually, how does that vary or differ from, you know, just trying to do the whole political freedom thing without it? Um, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, I think when you don't have spiritual freedom, when you're not, when your soul and your heart and your mind are not free in Christ— you see, the other kind of freedom, the political freedom and political things take a higher precedent. They become more fire. They come, become more elevated. Mm-hmm. And so when you don't get them, it's almost like because you don't have an inner sense of freedom, that just carries more weight and it's more threatening and it's more, it just, it becomes more intense. Whereas if you're coming to try to work for political freedom from a place of spiritual freedom, you're 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 on a stronger foundation. I feel like you're mm-hmm. not walking around eggshells or or super emotional about it. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to fully for me to fully. I think unpack. But I think I think when you don't have that first spiritual freedom, the political freedom just takes this elevated state which it shouldn't have, mm-hmm. and it becomes more divisive. It becomes more threatening. It becomes too elevated. Mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. No, absolutely. Nate, what are your thoughts, buddy? Um, yeah, I think you know, with, with spiritual freedom, as in like you know, knowing Jesus and surrendering to Jesus first, we uh, we have a heart change. So that's what has to come first. You can't try and lead people with your own sinful desires and flesh and heart. So the heart change comes first. With knowing Jesus and surrendering to Jesus, you grow in compassion. So mm-hmm. you see people different and not as a solution to a problem or or the problem yeah but as how jesus might see them and you become more selfless so those would be some some traits of following jesus so i think the reality and this is from my you know my political science degree is that the pursuit of our politics is is um uh, equality everyone gets equal opportunity equal everything i shouldn't even say equal opportunity that's a Equality is this pursuit, and mm-hmm. the Jesus kingdom principle of politics is completely the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's elevation of your brother and um, and a mutual submission. It's actually way better <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. than equality. Like, I mm-hmm. gave you an opportunity, so there you go. We're equal. Yeah. Um, but no, the Jesus you know, kingdom political realm would be way elevated. And so if we want freedom, uh, like, I think— you, I'm not sure if it was this term in PT or another one, but you said like we could actually solve world hunger. It's an actual, there, there's, there is a solution. Their food is here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and yet their crappy human leadership, our, our, our mm-hmm. broken hearts, our sinful desires, our selfishness, it, it gets in the way. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we're looking at trying to do everything equally and you know, keep everyone happy. And the Jesus kingdom stuff is like, lay your life down for your brother and, <laughs> yeah. And elevate each other. So it's a it's a beautiful dichotomy of what our world would say in the pursuit of our world can only mm-hmm. ever get so far, mm-hmm. and it only ever will. 
But when we come in with Christ focus, it's elevated everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Toby. Yeah, I think every decision's got a, a, a huge ripple effect. And uh, like just what's going on at the moment in Ukraine and, and Russia, like we had friends here on, on Sunday and after the service, they're just sitting there bowling. So we go up, can we pray for you guys? What's going on? And they were just like so emotionally moved by, you know, this war that's going on. Um, and I think that's, that kind of shows a lot, like where, where the, the, the heart of that decision comes from. Mm. If that was Christ centered, it would have a positive ripple effect and not send all these negative ripples into the whole world. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I think that's a good way to measure like where, where was the heart at yeah. when making certain calls? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. PT, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think of Lindy who didn't want to get vaccinated, but did in submission, respect, honor for, you know, us, for me in particular, to be in a relationship with me who you know, has multiple issues that would have gone pretty bad with COVID. Mm. Out of love, she gave up her freedom. Mm. And and that that's what we all do. We don't demand freedom. And we don't, de- and, and when, when the government has to demand that you give up your freedom for others, it gets awkward. Yeah. But we deliberately, uh, voluntarily give up our freedoms for each other to esteem others higher. And, mm. uh, and, and, and spiritual, without, without spiritual freedom, because it's impossible to have justice for everything to be working great, yeah. when I have the Spirit of Christ, I can graciously suffer injustice. That's exactly what Christ did, right? I can graciously put others first. I can take the back seat. Mm -hmm. You know, that can't happen when we're all claiming our rights and what we and looking for what we justly deserve. The kingdom is upside down. It's different than that. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, (laughs) it's interesting that we we willingly give up our our rights and our freedoms for the sake of lifting others up. And that actually ties really well into kind of the next question I wanted to ask because you know, I've heard it said before, if you get one more, more than one person in a room, there's bound to be a fight at some point. Um, you <laughs> I know, can fight in my own. <laughs> well, that's myself. fair too. <laughs> that's fair too. Um, but you know, I mean, on a, on a Sunday, like on Sunday where you're trying to engage with people from all over the scale when it comes to politics and all these different things, you know, one of the big questions that comes up is you know, how do you engage with people from a different standpoint on any topic, but in this case, politics while still maintaining a relationship. And I think you've kind of already started into that a little bit with this idea that we choose to give up certain things. Um, you know, and, but, but for you guys, like, what does that look like when, when someone, you know, when you engage with someone that has an opposing view, be it politics or, or theology or whatever, how do you, how do you walk that line of, of navigating the topic? Well, hopefully maintaining the relationship and Jamie, I'll get you started with somebody. Yeah, I think, the key thing for me is that you have to stay united on the things that matter most. Mm-hmm. Um, we're never going to be united about our political opinions and policy opinions, like 100%. Yeah. Um, and, and that's okay, because what's higher and more important than that is who is our Savior is Jesus. So if we're united around Christ and His mission, then those other things become a little bit more peripheral. We can still care about them. We can still be passionate about them. We can still think like, this is how I think the best way for society to, to work is. And that's fine. And we can d- learn how to disagree on that. I th- actually, the biggest issue I think in the world today is an inability to talk to one another because mm-hmm. of disagreement. And if anything, the church should be the the place the that models for the world that you can be united on something and still disagree on other things. And so... Thankfully, because we have Christ and because he's our Lord and Savior and not our political opinions are not our Lord and Savior, that's where I would always point us. I hate like, yeah, you disagree on mass or you disagree on vaccines or you disagree on the convoy, but we both agree, right? Like that what matters most is that Jesus becomes first and that people continue to learn how to submit to his lordship. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what we agree on. Right. Yes. Okay. So then, then if you agree on that, then there's other things. Are a little bit less important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Love yeah, you. if I can add to that, I think uh, the the fruit of the spirit, which is self control, gets tasted a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's know, right. Like yeah. whether whether uh, am I going to jump into this argument and try to convince this person, mm-hmm. or am I going to have the self control to go, is this worth it? And like you were saying, Jay, like focus on the stuff that really matters. Yeah. Um, and and pride also plays a big role into that. Going, do I need to be right? Do I need to convince this person? Uh, I was in an argument 
recently with somebody who wanted to convince me that the earth is flat. You know, cool. He didn't do it, and neither <laughs> did I convince him that the earth was round. But at some point you go, okay, that's not. <laughs> yeah. let's not keep going down yeah. this road. It's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Let's rather talk about Jesus or something that we both could have in common. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I think that self-control is, is key. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nate? Yeah, first, I think the earth is actually a triangle, but that's separate. <laughs> that's a whole other discussion, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, just, a few, good. just a few points I would say is when you're talking to someone about your view, you should talk really loudly and sternly. <laughs> that's right. And then when they share theirs, you should look away and mm. huff. Mm. And think yeah. about what you're going to say next. Uh, yeah, Smart. yeah. Smart. Put your no, fist like in the air. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think some like class, just don't care. Some things that I've been working on, and I will mm. self-admittedly say this has always been hard for me, especially on certain topics. I mostly because I feel like I have researched that topic a lot, and I do have something to say. And uh, mm. listening becomes more difficult when you think you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. And so, uh, learning to listen well and uh, try to understand why does that resonate mm-hmm. with them so much yeah even though i think maybe they're wrong but why does it resonate with them uh what is that hitting in their heart and mind that they're going yeah that's important to me so listening better is something i've been working on uh similar to jay's point i've always said like find common ground like we do agree on a lot of things just because this is one smaller topic the you know the triangular earth you know like (laughs) this isn't the most that isn't the main thing that we actually agree on we agree on so much more Mm -hmm. and so trying to remember that uh because otherwise we kind of welcome satan in to fuel division Mm -hmm. and go like we are so divided because we can't agree on this (laughs) it's like well that's actually one small thing in the grand scheme of everything else we we manage and then the last part is something i think i said in my sermon about you know watching what we say is uh being you know just because we're right doesn't give us the you know uh, dignity to or the the opportunity to just show how righteous we are Mm, um so trying to figure out you know is this my opportunity to really be right and show them I'm right or to show them I'm righteous, like saved by grace and mm-hmm. who I am in Christ and my opportunity to you know, be, be, uh, be an example, an ambassador of the king. And so I, I have, you know, with multiple friends who've argued whether it was, you know, why they use marijuana and mm-hmm. blah, 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 and they want to get onto this topic because they know I disagree with them. So they really, I just keep going like, listen, I'd rather you know Jesus than stop smoking. I really don't care if you smoke, but if you don't know Jesus, I'm really concerned, you know, and Mm -hmm. so they want to pick a, pick that one because they know it riles me up a little bit and I want to just keep trying to bring them back to Jesus um, if I can. So try and figure out what are the mountains or the hills that I do actually, like this side of eternity want to die on. Mm -hmm. One of those being eternity. I think just to add, add, you said something really helpful there, I think at the beginning where you're like trying to listen well, if, if we seek to understand why something matters to someone mm-hmm. it show like mm, even just good. that posture shows the person you're talking to that you actually want to understand them and that's one of the things we all want more more than a lot of things is yeah. we want to be understood and heard and so if we actually do that even though we disagree if we actually show that we heard number one and two understood then the conversation is much more civil and then there actually might be more okay that you disagree with them because you've listened and you've heard and you've understood. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, just to add what Nate said was, was so good. No, oh, absolutely. That's an excellent point. And uh, as a follow-up to that, because you guys had talked about this idea of we need to, you know, we need to find the common ground. We need to, you know, we need to invest in the things we actually do have in common. The, the you know, the next question in that is how do, how do we actually guard against allowing the things that do cause the division um, to not override the common ground of, of following Christ and being on mission. Um, you know, how do, how, how do we safeguard against that? What's the practical way of doing that? Uh, what do you guys think on that? Well, Nate? Yeah, real quick, I think we just live, you have to live in the tension. I think uh, there's mm-hmm. a, a desire as, as a, a pastor maybe to go one way or the other. Yeah. Either be like completely, all I'm going to preach about is the topics that are happening in culture today because that's what you're all concerned about on your social media, so that's all I'm going to preach on. Yeah. Or all we're going to talk about is going to uh, consume every bit of our, and then the opposite tension is we're just not going to talk about that. We're only ever going to talk about Jesus and pretend we don't live in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's there's a tension that is hard to manage, mm-hmm. and yet we're called to live in it. Yeah. And uh, we're called to figure out, like, we are aliens, and yet we're in the world. Mm-hmm. We're not of it, but we're in it. Mm-hmm. And we're supposed to be light in the darkness. So all those that tension, it feels wrong because light 
doesn't like the darkness, and, <laughs> and we are aliens, so we feel odd in this world. So the, you know, those things are are are. I mean, scripturally, we're, we know that that's true, and yet yeah. we can't run from it. So we got to learn how to live in that tension and communicate about it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I think that's so key. Not not ignoring the issues or the hot topics at hand. Like, yeah, that's super important. But I think just to don't take disagreement personally. Like, it's not an attack. It's just a disagreement. Like, it's not personal threat to you. And so, like, just have have grace for disagreement. Expect disagreement sometimes, but also just don't don't take it personal. Yeah, uh, is I think may be helpful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I I think for me on that topic is I was looking at my time uh, when I'm in relationship with people. I always try to assess how much time am I spending on certain things. Like mm-hmm. when we're in conversation, when we're engaging, and you know how much time am I investing in seeing you know how they're doing, seeing what's going on in their life, seeing what Christ is doing in their life and sharing Christ versus some of these hot topics. Um, because there, like you guys said, there is, there's actually a place and a time for those discussions. But I find if my time, if all my time is going into that in a relationship, that's usually a good gauge for me of going, okay, I need to, I need to reorient a little bit and get back to focusing and I'm sharing what Christ is doing in my life and how I can be investing in them. Um, and that's been, that's been a good one over the years. There's actually been a few of my friends where I've straight up said, listen, we got to stop talking about this because it's all we ever talk about. Mm. Um, and we need to, we need to actually, you know, talk about things that are going to lift us up and encourage us. Um, so yeah, that's been an interesting for, one for me over the last little bit of trying to figure out and navigate. And uh, like I said, it is a tension because sometimes you do need to talk about those things. But yeah, so it's been interesting. But uh, I want to I want to shift gears just slightly. And uh, PT, you you quoted something else. I want to pull up here real quick. You said um, you will come to a point when you have done that enough. That being not coming under the Lordship of Christ, not leaning into God, but actually turning away. Like when he, when he presents you with something, instead of accepting it, you know, kind of stepping back and you used Pharaoh's the kind of the illustration there. Uh, he said, so you'll come to a point when you've done that enough that God will take over and honor the direction you have chosen and harden your heart even more. Can you just quickly for, for our listeners, just elaborate a little bit on that and kind of give a little more context to that quote, and then I have a few questions I want to throw at you guys. Well, it's, it's kind of terrifying and extremely complicated. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't pretend to have any clue when when those points are. Like, uh, just it's it's a warning, right? The the mm-hmm. Hebrews text is warning us: don't harden your heart, because after five deliberate attempts, where Pharaoh <laughs> chose to tell God to shove off, then God said, "Fine, that's where you're going," and. Uh, you know, God knows the direction that we're choosing for our lives, and with free will, He allows it. Yeah, He'll go find. I'll, I'll use your hard heart. I'll make it even harder to get what, and and it mm. will it will accomplish my purposes. God has the ability to take evil to accomplish His purposes and produce the good He intends for mankind. But man, do you want to be the one where He starts hardening your heart to achieve that? Yeah. So it comes out of the the warning text in Hebrews. Pharaoh is a, a terrifying example of it all gone wrong. And uh, the call is don't ever get anywhere close to that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no matter how much God has disappointed you and let you down, and maybe you feel he's betrayed you, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, keep your hearts off to him. Yeah, absolutely. So then the question becomes, you know, how, how do we, what are, I guess, some of the indicators that our hearts are starting to harden? You know, it is a warning text. So what what do we look for? What are those What are those yellow flags where we go? Oh man, I gotta get on my knees. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think one good one is you know read through the te- read through scripture and see what what makes God happy. Mm. What makes God in heaven rejoice? And we say this a lot at New Hope. Like if you can't rejoice at a baptisms yeah. like service where people are giving their lives to Jesus and coming under His lordship, like you should be. Heaven is rejoicing. Mm. So, like, you should be rejoicing. You should be excited. And if you can't get excited about the things that God is excited about, it's usually a pretty good indicator that your heart is, is starting to get hard yeah. or already is. And so, like, time to step in and, and do something. But I think big things like that, like, the, read through Scripture and see what makes the heart of God happy when, when, a, when a sinner repents, mm. you know, and, and someone in your life group repents before you. And you, and you almost, it makes me smile. It's kind of weird. Where he's like, wow, like, thank you yeah, for, sh- for sharing this moment with us. Thank you for confessing before your brothers and sisters, like, 
that's amazing. Let's pray and rejoice together now. You know, like mm. if you could, like your heart should be so excited for something like that. But if it's not, if you're just like, yeah, whatever, you, you get over it. It's just sin. You know, they're <laughs> like, ah, you, your, your heart might not be ticking like God's heart, you know? Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Nate. Yeah. Uh, apathy. So people are there for like, you must be around people, but you'd rather not be around people. You don't see people. You don't see them with compassion. Mm-hmm. Um, there may be a means to an end, but you don't, your heart doesn't break for people in general, whether Christians or not. And then the other thing that I, I often think that is an indicator of our hard heart is our words. Mm. Like, you know, what flows from your mouth. We're supposed to have like, you know, the truth on our lips at all yeah. times. Yeah. And, uh, when our words are not, uh, are, are certainly our, you know, our words aren't showing love and that compassion and uh, aren't proclaiming the name of Jesus and are instead grumbling we get warned a lot even just actually at our lunch meeting like we get warned a lot about our attitude and our grumbling yeah. <laughs> in scripture and so uh if our words are not uh filled with joy and hope mm. and uh yeah the, the truth of scripture then i would say those are often a great indicator of where's your heart at if your words are flowing is sometimes it's you know, not just a funny conversation that was actually yep. a little dangerous yeah absolutely toby yeah for me it's uh it's pride once again uh, Bible says God will resist the pride, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think that's that's a really good measure for myself. To go the moment you like nobody can say anything to you or speak into your life, yeah, that's a big no no sign of you've got too much pride going on. Like you, you need to humble yourself and soften your heart mm-hmm. and listen to what brothers and sisters in Christ want to speak into your life. Uh, yeah. yeah, so for me that that that'll definitely be the main measure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, Jay. Yeah, just one uh, thing to add. I think is. Thanksgiving, like, do you, are you thankful? You know, yeah. so much of mm-hmm. of the language of Thanksgiving goes throughout Scripture, especially in Colossians. You know, he says, like, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father. Like, if you find yourself not being thankful for much, or if you if you just, like, stop, do the spiritual discipline of saying, I'm going to write down everything I'm thankful for, and you're having a hard time writing stuff down, maybe another indicator that your heart's getting hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. PT. Yeah, and the opposite of that is envy, right? That's the sin part, where you you aren't grateful, and so you're envious. That that creates a bitter heart, right? uh, a, a hard heart. Bitterness creates a hard heart. Resentment creates a hard heart. Unforgiveness creates a hard. Mm. It's not hard to just hear those words and go, well, yeah, of course that's what happened. You know, steer clear. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Some of those are are pretty sneaky, actually. Things like bitterness can be very sneaky and how it works its way in because you can feel so justified sometimes uh, if you've been hurt or if, if someone's offended you or, or wronged you, you can get in this place of, of feeling justifiably right in how you feel. And, and the danger in that is that that bitterness will slowly turn your heart to stone. Um, a root of bitterness is a good it. phrase from the scriptures. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You got it. And the uh, root takes, yeah. And once it takes hold, man. So yeah, that's a that's a really good one. Uh so this one this one's a bit of a personal question for you guys, but I thought it would be We don't do personal. No, that's right, we, we don't do personal. Do. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I'm gonna share a story with someone I know. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Asking Let's for talk a about friend. the earth shape again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, as as pastors, you guys I mean the reality <laughs> is you wade into a lot of stuff and you face a lot of things and that can be that can wear you down and that can dire you out. And, uh, you know, so the question is, what areas are you guys tempted in to have your hearts hardened in the midst of all the stuff you face on a regular basis? And then the follow up to that is like, how do you work against that? How do you how do you you know stand up and say, no, we're not you know, we're not going to give into this hardened heart. And I know it's a big one. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'll go first. Yeah. I know what mine is. Yeah, yeah I, we all we do. <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody knows. I wear it on my forehead. <laughs> no, I think you know, like when you're surrounded by people all the time, and and the loudest people are usually the people that are having the biggest issues. Yeah, um, it's easy to to be apathetic. It's easy to be like, oh man, not again, or, or I don't care. It's like easy to just. To, to get a hard heart for, for people who are going through something or going through the same thing, yeah. you know, where it's like, oh, we've dealt with this before. Like, what the heck? Just yeah. listen to me. Listen to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like, for me, that's that's a big one often I because I, I am naturally more logical. I'm naturally more reasoned and, like, cold. Uh, thank God my wife is way more hospitable and soft-hearted, <laughs> and so she evens me out, thankfully. Um, 
but I think how I how I kind of deal with that personally is usually God will kind of show me. He'll be either from a friend, my wife, you know, Nate sitting next to me sometimes. <laughs> and so, I, so then when I get those comments like, "Hey, like maybe like open your mind a little bit or soften your heart," I'll be like, "Oh gosh, that." So I'll I'll go back to the Lord and say, "God, I'm clearly not seeing them through your eyes." Mm-hmm. I need your eyes. Yes. I'm seeing it through f- fleshly eyes, not even eyes of compassion or anything, just fleshly eyes. I need to take that off mm-hmm. as best I can and see them through the lens of the cross, as PT yeah. said Sunday. You know, we got to see the world, see the issues, see the people standing right in front of us through the lens of the cross. And also, uh, like, humble yourself. Like, or am I any better? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I have some repeated issues of patience, you know? Like, so this should my wife just, you know kick me off for that not like you know i hope that she would ask the same thing that she would see me through the lens (laughs) of the cross so so i think that's that's been the most helpful thing for me to Mm -hmm. just yeah but the people around me man like the people who are closest to me thank god for them like uh, you know we all have blind spots and it wasn't for them Mm -hmm. uh you know my community of faith uh, my life group my wife these guys sitting around me if it wasn't for for these guys (laughs) i'd be a whole lot more apathetic than i am (laughs) absolutely thanks for sharing man appreciate it nate well, um, I'm the opposite of Jay. I'm super uh, <laughs> empathetic and maybe to my own fault. So I guess one sometimes a reason my heart actually gets hard would be um, feeling like I've been used and abused. Like yeah. I poured myself out to somebody and tried to help or whatever, and then they took off and <laughs> and just left. And then and or like I was there for them over and over again, and they act as if I never did anything for them and yeah. uh, complain. Mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. uh and still leave so those those would be moments that it's ho- always hard for me not to harden my heart towards those people knowing what i've how much i've given and how much i actually did get on my knees and pray for them yeah and care for them and then go like well still they didn't they didn't think it was good enough you know yeah. or whatever so those are hard moments uh the other ones for me is like i've repented to these guys uh, in our staff multiple times is i often wonder if i'm making a difference at all like met you save a few people but like yeah so many people just seem so messed up and I, yeah. it's very hard. So I just in general towards our world and towards the future, I get a sometimes a pessimistic view of the kingdom coming now and mm-hmm. how great we're doing if we're doing anything. So, yeah. so my solution for that is the second part of the question you asked. And I would say like, I, I try, you know, often, if not at least intentionally, you know, a couple times a year to go back to the garden, just sit with God yeah. and go, why am I here? And who do I actually serve? Mm. So that's beauty. Um, it allows me to put up with more crap. Yeah, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, no, that's uh, fair. Because I'm here not for, not for you, but for God, mm-hmm. and I serve God. And uh, if God wants to pull me out of here, you can pull me out of here. That's up to God, and I serve Him, and, and yeah. I'm His servant, so I'm good to go. You got it. And so the the lumps, if you will, uh, which seem to come, aren't as heavy when it's like, well, it's just coming from people. Yeah. You, I, I serve God, so I don't mm-hmm. serve, I don't see serve a person, and I think as a Anytime in ministry, it's hard to differentiate that because it feels like we're in the people business, mm-hmm. but serving our God has mm-hmm. called us to that business. Yeah, thanks, man. Toby? I think for me, I struggle. I uh, I can't forgive as quick and good as Jesus. <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> if... Mm. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> no, it, I, I just... Hmm. <laughs> I did forgive you, though. <laughs> Triangle. <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, you know if something goes wrong somebody mm. you know don't show up or disappoint you or do you wrong yeah like i i struggle to just go oh you're forgiven let's mm-hmm. move on mm-hmm. like i will mumble about it a lot with lindy and you know yeah and then she gets mad at this person which isn't always right That's true. And, then, <laughs> and then i always you know i always when i pray oh god i, I know the scripture it says you know our battle isn't against flesh and blood mm-hmm. yeah. but against bird but this person is being mm. the bad mm. word. Yep. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of, and then, you know, and then I, I choose to forgive, not because we have to, or, or you know, but because I want to. Mm. Uh, and, and that means way more than going, what well, am I right? Am is this person right or wrong? Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's, that's mainly what I struggle with. And mm-hmm. I think I can easily also turn into a hard heart. We get to point that's it. Enough people have done me wrong. Yeah. I'm done forgiving. Yeah. I'm not moving on. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Toby. Yeah. PT. A very long list. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, 
people who are full of baloney mm-hmm. and share their nonsense liars like the the spin doctors like the, you know totally you know like, i know what i know you're not telling the truth i know you're just mm-hmm. bsing me and I, I just have a hard time with that mm-hmm. yeah and it's I, I have a hard time being compassionate and listening and mm-hmm. and just taking this barrage of junk whatever yeah um but and, and that probably doesn't make my heart i don't know if my heart gets hurt on this or not but when you just keep making stupid decisions away from God year after year after year after year. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And then I realized I gotta remember how patient God is with me, not has been, mm-hmm. currently is. Yeah. And then I get off my high hard hearted horse and in love again. But, mm. Yeah. So if you're one of those, I love you. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those those ones tempt me to have a hard heart. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. How about you, Matt? You don't have a hard heart. <laughs> no, Matt's perfect. <laughs> Come on. That's a funny, funny one. Um, I think the, uh, at least in recent years, there's two that have, are always the temptation for me. Uh, the first one's kind of in line with what some of you guys said. It's, it's um, you know, it's when people keep doing the thing and you're going, no, like, there is a better way. We've shown you the better way. We've presented this 400 different ways. <laughs> and yet you continue down this road. Um, that one's always hard for me. Um, I'm a problem solver. So when there's a solution and you don't take it, I get irritated um, <laughs> by nature. And that's uh, the solution for me in that one is it's a, it's a really simple prayer and I have to do it all the time. And it's, it's God help me, help me to realize what you're doing and how you see them. Um, and then that's usually when God kind of gives me pause and reminds me that it is an incredibly sacred thing to walk with someone mm-hmm. towards Christ. Amen. Like that's an, that's an incredibly sacred privilege that we have as Christ followers. And it does mean a lot of pain and suffering and angst and frustration, but the, it, it's sacred. Like it's an invitation by God to walk with someone. Um, and so that, that has been... Yeah, that's been the way. That's been the, the cure to that for me. And I still pray it quite frequently. Uh, and the other one, it's the same kind of prayer, but it, it's actually with, um, it's that self-righteousness I see in people sometimes. I want to get hard towards those people. Um, and then, like you know, like you said, you kind of have to get off your own self-righteous horse and, and realize that uh, we all need the same grace. Um, but yeah, it's it's realizing that, that you are you have this incredible privilege and it's a sacred journey. And, and God has called us to it and he didn't have to, right? It's an invitation and that should, that should humble us a bit, I think. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me in the podcast today. Thank you for just always being honest and, and sharing your hearts and, and, you know, the fact that, that you guys, like everybody else are navigating this, struggling with this, surrendering this and trying to be obedient to, to Christ. Thank you. Um, you know, to our podcast listeners, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we would love to connect with you. So you haven't connected with us, jump on the app, jump on the website. We have a connect card there. I can attest to it. I tested it the other day. Works great. Uh, we would love to connect with you, and we'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.